今日はもう少し一緒にいたいな Hello, Dark Horizon here. I'm completely burnt out. I can't think of anything and I just lose motivation to do anything. So I want to do something that makes me happy and is really easy. And you know what makes me happy? Waifus. So let's do a video on Honey Pop. To update you on what I've been doing on the side, I've been playing a lot of video games. And I mean a lot. Just look at my Steam library to get an idea of what I mean. I've played about maybe five games from there. I finished Bioshock Infinite, Faster Than Light, and Journey on PC. And I don't really want to make a full video on Journey. However, it's a really peaceful game. And to me, it felt like a journey through life. And when you finally reach your goal, this light from a distant mountain, I interpreted it as accepting your death and paving the way for another life to make that same journey that you had begun. Whoa, you're so deep. I know, I know. I'm so deep. Even I'm surprised how deep I am sometimes. I look at the Mariana Trench and I'm like, whoa, I'm deeper than that. <laughs> I also、um, played a bit of Bioshock 1, Nier Automata, The Witcher 3, Hollow Knight, Slime Rancher, Darkest Dungeon, Death Road to Canada, Dead by Daylight, and VA11 Hall A. In short, I've been trying to find a game that really stuck with me, and I think I've finally found one in Divinity 2 Original Sin Definitive Edition, which I'm currently playing. F these salamanders. No, seriously. F these salamanders. How do they take so much damage? I just hit him with six backstabs and he's still alive. What what the hell? My god. Screw this crocodile. Screw these magisters. Screw this witch. Looks like we'll have to find some other way to keep you busy. Ooh. She bites her lip and leans in, close to your face. As she whispers, her breath, faintly fragrant with a sweet honeyish smell, caresses your ear. You almost forget where you are. Ooh. I find you rather delicious. Ooh. I mean, literally, screw this witch. C come on. I mean, I can't be the only one who wants to screw Radica. I've got to admit, I mean, this, this scene. Is about the hottest thing ever. I mean, just imagining Sabeel kissing Radica, just. Oof, oof. But I'm still dead. Okay, it's day 59. I don't think she's noticed yet. I spent 58 days oiling up this entire place. Look, she's actually blind.、I'm、not even kidding. <laughs> Now you die. Radica is dead. Ah,、uh, but I wanted the option for her to be my waifu. Anyway, I may or may not make another video on Divinity 2 Original Sin, but I'm just not a master at the game yet. I'm still in Chapter 1, and I've realized how badly I've screwed up in min maxing my characters. But it's really enjoyable. It is one of the best games. Definitively. <laughs> I am the king of yorks.、Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Honey pop. To preface this, I'm into about every fetish you could name, except, uh, scat and ugly bastard. To be clear, I'm not condemning those fetishes. Everyone is into something different. So, if it fits your kink and it's not hurting you or anybody else, Then there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. But you're into rape and reverse rape? Yes, but only in the fantasy context when we all know it's not real, it's roleplay. The point is, Tiffany being a schoolgirl is about the most vanilla fetish I have ever seen. It is so normal as a kink that Tiffany May in Honey Pop resembles, in fact, a vanilla ice cream. Wait, did I actually say that? <clears throat> well, I guess we'll have to spend the next 30 minutes. I'm lying, I actually don't know how long this is gonna be. 
irrefutably proving Tiffany May is in fact a vanilla ice cream. Okay, to start off with, Tiffany May likes milky pink and cheerleading, which are typical effeminate things, which point to her being your favorite classic flavor of ice cream. Even her cup size is classic. I mean, C for classic. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding there. But you see, that's barely enough information to call Tiffany May an ice cream. But you know what? Tiffany May has this balance present in ice cream between wanting to explore this sexual and wilder side of her, but she's also afraid. Why don't I first prove that she has this other side to her that she wants to embrace? Well, you see, Tiffany's images are all noticeably lewd. Her first image that she sends you is a panty shot. And this first image is what pushed me over the edge on this idea. I mean, look at Q's first two images. One of her flying through the skies of the mythical sky garden and one of them innocently reading, wait, is that my porn magazines? Whoa! <laughs> I mean, innocent. All the other characters have these really tame and innocent first photos, but Tiffany's photos are noticeably more lewd. I hear what you're saying. I don't believe you. Me neither. So why don't we bring out more evidence to really bring this point home that she has this wild and adventurous side to her, the gifts she likes are from the rave and scuba categories. By the way, if you're wondering why a baby binky, or as it is more commonly known, a pacifier is part of the rave category, I searched it up. And it seems like from this answer on Quora, that pacifiers were used by people who attended raves because when they took ecstasy and other stimulants, they wouldn't cut up their own mouths from involuntary movement of their teeth, which is actually kind of dark if you think about it, although it has since become a fashion statement as well. She likes to adventure and party, to let loose from this innocent persona that she inhabits, but she hesitates to accept the side of her as seen from the wiki, Tiffany likes flirtation tokens the most, but dislikes sexuality tokens. And if we recall, Audrey also likes flirtation, but dislikes romance. Why is this? Because people take advantage of her, because all she has going for her are her looks. So it would be natural that she would be afraid of opening herself up to romance. She likes flirtation, because there's no commitment to flirtation. She likes that process of being able to manipulate others to buy things for her. Although she talks a tough game, Audrey likes flirtation because it's the surface level of love. It's the appearance, the shower of compliments, the slick, the slick hairstyles, square jawlines, pungent aromas of cologne and perfume. It's the carefully constructed images about who you are. She likes that because she's afraid of truly loving somebody. In the same way, Tiffany is also afraid of truly loving somebody, which is why she favors flirtation. But she's afraid of someone loving her sexually, allowing her to explore her sexuality, to embrace her, and this fear that someone might not like her wild side. This is reaffirmed by both of the, these questions that Tiffany herself asks you. That is, if you had to pick one, what do you think your biggest weakness is? I can be pretty insecure about my relationship. What was your first kiss like? Sloppy, I don't think either of us knew what we were doing. She's scared and inexperienced with this other wild side of her, this sexual side of her, which she attempts to show you through her images. She's almost like Belly in a sense, because her character is about balance too. That is, Tiffany is really fit and stays in shape as a cheerleader, but has a sweet tooth for candy, indulging in it even though she knows she shouldn't. The same idea applies towards her sexuality. She's innocent, inexperienced, 
but wants to embrace that wilder side of her. But there's something that keeps her back and afraid, and makes her think that she shouldn't. So, why does Tiffany hate sexuality so much? And I think that is because of her mother. She's afraid that if she embraces the sexual side of herself, she will become like her mother. As her description reads, Tiffany does not get along with her mother, Jessie, and makes great strides to stay away from her mother and her lifestyle. And not only does she disapprove of her mother being a porn star, but also being a bad parent, that her mother just chose someone who was attracted to her sexually at the young age of 16, but was not committed because her father disappeared shortly after Jessie became pregnant. Also, the fact that she had Tiffany when she was 16, so likely Jessie, her mother, didn't have the resources or capability to provide for Tiffany properly. In addition to this, even when Jessie grew into an adult and had the capabilities, she still didn't care for Tiffany properly, now instead obsessed with the glamour of the porn business, or perhaps she never had the chance to learn how to be a good mother properly. This is corroborated by this question from Jessie's Q&A. Would you fault somebody for stupid mistakes they made in the past? And the ideal answer for that, which Jessie wants to hear is, of course not, the past is in the past. And I'm inclined to think that these mistakes she wants Tiffany to forgive her for are about her careless attitude in being a parent towards little events that built up over time, such as not going to Tiffany's graduation or forgetting to pick Tiffany up from social events after getting dead drunk and such. Now, before you attack Jessie, I really hated Jessie, but now I have a slightly different perspective on her. Despite being someone who only cares about sex and looks, and is manipulative, she does have a few redeeming qualities. The first of which is pretty ironic, because Tiffany hates her for being a porn star, but Jessie became a porn star to support her daughter first and foremost. Jessie's description from the wiki reads this. After having her daughter Tiffany at the young age of 16, Jessie got into adult film to support her and her daughter, but quickly fell in love with the money and attention. It's how she fell in love with the money and attention that Tiffany hates, but it's almost poetic how Jessie, Tiffany's mother, would begin something with the best of intentions to help her daughter only to have it be her downfall and what causes her, her daughter to dislike her. I mean, working out of desperation to support your baby daughter seems like something pretty admirable to me. It's just this corruption of this good intent that made her lose sight of who she loved. Also, she really likes family, so even though she's a bad mother, she really loves Tiffany perhaps not knowing how to treat her better, and does her best to support her when she's not obsessed with money. You can see this from the questions Jessie asks you about yourself, but really asking about herself. How important is family to you? And the answer she looks for is, it's the most important thing in the world. That she would still see her daughter as the most important thing in her life even being corrupted as she is. As Kwa Rai Rai Za, I'm sorry for mispronouncing that, says from his comment on the Honey Pop wiki. In addition to that, Jessie's favorite season is winter because she has good memories from, from it. Tiffany's birthday is, in, is December 22nd. Jessie cherishes the holidays so much because of her love for her daughter to the point that her unique gifts are Christmas gifts. And that makes so much sense, and it's such a tragedy. I really hope that Jessie mends her relationship with Tiffany in Honey Pop 2, because it's set up perfectly. That Jessie is now a washed up porn star, so she has the chance to realize that her love for Tiffany is the thing which is most important, not the money or looks. However, you ask, 
How does this even relate to Tiffany being a vanilla ice cream in any shape or form? Simple. You see, this balance in Tiffany between wanting to embrace the sexual side of her but being scared to do so because she doesn't want to become her mother. It gives this depth, this subtlety of flavor to the ice cream. All these elements culminating together to enhance one another. The texture, the creaminess, the flavor in unity to create this perfect course of degustation. Which is to say, it's not related at all. But I mean, it shows how she's the perfect waifu, someone you want to treasure and save by mending the relationship between Tiffany and her mother. So yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about the flavor of the ice cream a little bit. If you've never tasted a vanilla ice cream, I mean, what am I saying? Of course you have. You know, a vanilla ice cream is sweet and so is Tiffany. Have a look at these answers. Have you ever slept, have you slept with a lot of girls? Wait, don't tell me. No, wait, yes, tell me. I lost count around 40. Have you ever cheated on anybody? Be honest. Nope, not yet anyway. Um, you're not like dating anybody else right now, are you? Yeah, but only like seven other chicks. Don't they seem a little weird? These answers are the ideal ones, the ones that Tiffany wants to hear. So they give us insight into her character. They illustrate that she likes someone who jokes around and is herself playful. She likes someone who's funny and sincere and she's upright as can be seen from her studious attitude towards her academics. Unlike me, because I'm making videos on waifus instead of studying. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's the holidays, but you know, damn it. These videos always make me feel bad. <laughs> and you can see beyond anything else that she's really kind when she asks, do you still talk with any of your exes? And she wants you to answer, yeah, I keep in touch with some of them. Tiffany has this universal appeal, like the flavor of vanilla, pure, innocent, misguided, yet so great. She's a good girl, one you would want to date one that you wouldn't mind falling in love with. I mean, I'm a sucker for shoulder length, straight black hair, just hair falling on a collarbone or behind her shoulders is so mind-bendingly sexy. I don't mind brown or any other dark colors or shades, but I usually find Asians more sexually attractive. Birds of a feather, you know? because people are predisposed to be more sexually attracted to those that they have more in common with. And race is one of those attributes. But when I look at Tiffany, it doesn't even matter anymore. I mean, just look at her. She's so goddamn sexy. And I just drink in how adorable and cute she looks. Like, oof, oof, oof. And in that way too, she is a vanilla ice cream being so sweet and succulent. The Honeypop Wiki even says, Tiffany is also more likely to have genuine feelings for the player based on her overall personality and personal preferences. But let me dis dissect that for you. What is her overall personality that makes her have genuine feelings in the first place? Well, Tiffany is earnest and hardworking. She isn't in this relationship to benefit or to manipulate others for any material benefit. She genuinely likes you, which I find really nice because she's someone who cares about you. She just wants to love you. I mean, ugh, I know I'm lonely, but still. But doesn't that just make you want to cuddle her? Yes, she may be vanilla, but she's beautiful vanilla. No matter how much spice, chocolate, or cookies and cream, or raw horse flesh ice cream may add, I have to say, I still really love the flavor of vanilla ice cream. It's simple, but at the same time, it's so filling and sweet. It's a kink that is comfortable and familiar in a sense, that makes me feel warm inside and right at home. I don't want something special like everybody else. I just want someone to care about me. And Tiffany 
is the perfect angel to do so. <clears throat> this would probably be the perfect time to insert footage of me eating a vanilla soft serve from McDonald's, but I don't really have the time or resources for that. So just imagine that I did. That sounds a little lewd. But you see, I have to address some common misconceptions about the beautiful vanilla ice cream. I mean, Tiffany. You see, in doing research for this video, and the actual inspiration for this video, Dronable, another YouTube creator, I really admire him, made a video on Tiffany. Now, if you watch the whole video, you'll know it's a joke because he comes to the conclusion that Tiffany is Adolf Hitler. But he has some almost valid points at the start of the video. So he starts off by calling vanilla ice cream shallow. How dare you? By the way, Tr Momo is my true waifu, but Tiffany's great as well. He calls her shallow because she has this Q&A. When she asks the player if they would date an unattractive girl if they liked her as a person. If the player says no, she agrees and jokingly asks if both the player and her are horrible people. Ha ha, he he. And the ideal answer is no. But I mean, does it really matter? Dronable, I disagree with you there. I know that you were joking, but as Rhett and Link said, and I'm gonna steal because I liked it, you don't get a, to choose a lot in life, but one thing you do get to choose is who you love. Am I personally into looks over personality? No, I would not date anyone who's just beautiful. However, I personally think you should be able to choose who you're attracted to, and if looks is a component of that, then that's okay. In his video, Dronable also does list something in his video, uh, what did I say? <laughs> you get what I'm saying, which is important. He says that it's shallow that Tiffany would need you to like the same thing that she likes to approve of you. However, I think that's more of a problem of the game as a whole. You can tell some of the questions don't really show the affection of dating. For example, what's like my favorite thing to do? Cheerleading. I mean, it sounds like Tiffany has run out of things to ask you about herself, which points at the bigger problem. Simple questions just don't show affection. So in that way, Dronable in a sense is right, that it is shallow to have to, have to like the same exact same things as your dating partner for them to approve of you. Dating revolves around understanding each other and a lot of the times, even if you love each other, you aren't going to like the exact same things. But that doesn't mean you can't love each other. However, the problem which makes Dronable's argument mute is you could say that exact same thing for every girl in the game because they want you to like all the same things they do as well. If your logic applies, isn't Belly shallow because she wants people to say this exact answer? I wouldn't say I'm 100% non-spiritual, but I don't lose my mind about it. Or what about when she asks, what does happiness mean to you? Where the correct answer is, I'm just happy to be alive at all. Why can't different people have different definitions of happiness? Doesn't this mean that Belly is shallow for not accepting another person has a uh, another a different definition of happiness? So I'd see it more as a fold of the game, not expressing the complexity of dating. And I feel like a better system uh, would work more like a conversation instead of simple questions where you have a chance to explain your views. But admittedly, that's a little more complex. Or instead, the game awarding you bonuses to deliberately offend your partner and go against what they wanted to hear, but setting them on a better path. Also, there should be more physical intimacy through dialogue options, such as being able to hug or kiss your lover outside of sex scenes, I feel like. One last note, just because dating in Honeypop revolves around getting a girl drunk and buying them gifts, does not mean that it's trying to say real life is like that. Of course dating in real life isn't like that. Remember, this is also a game where you do dating through a puzzle game, so it's obvious that it doesn't mean to reflect real life in many ways. Also, someone like me gets to have sex. Wait, wait, what's that? Oh god, no! Oh, oh no! 
put, put out the bird. Ah, oh, no. Ah. Um, I also did this video partially to disapprove Dronable, who said there wasn't anything else to do on Honey Honey Pop. So I want to systematically disprove him by doing a 30 minute analysis on each of the girls based on absolutely any detail I can find. From where they live to what are their unique date gifts to their outfits, anything. Also, funny story, I created a Twitter account just to contact Dronable because there is no other way to contact him, asking if he wanted to do a video together. And when he didn't respond, I commented on one of his videos asking the same thing and he didn't respond. <laughs> I cry. I mean, I don't mind if he rejects me. I just wish he did reject me. <laughs> anyway, I do understand. He probably just didn't see it or saw it and thought I was lame. <laughs> now that I've officially cleared up any question that Tiffany is an ice cream, I want to talk about Honey Bob 2. As part of the run up to the release of Honey Bob 2, I will keep on making these videos. I love Honey Pop and I want to do it justice. I screwed up one on one of my previous videos, but you know what? If I do a hundred videos, one of them is probably going to be okay. But the outlook actually looks pretty good. I did say that I was skeptical of the art for Honey Pop 2, but the teaser art actually looks really good. It looks really polished. This right here is one of the scenes that was removed from Honey Pop 2 because it didn't fit with the story and I can't show you the bottom because it involves nudity. But I mean, look at that texture, that lampshade, and how beautiful both characters look. I have to say that the art seems to really have evolved between the two games. There's this extra layer of polish. This attention to detail, which you can see from how shiny the hair is. The skin just doesn't look as flat. It's got some depth to it now. Also, a quick preview to a song which will be in Honey Pop 2. I like it. It's really high in energy. And Jonathan Wandag, sorry if I mispronounced that, did an awesome job in Honey Pop 1 because I'm looking forward to his music again. He did a splendid job in the first game and I just really would like to listen to his music again and that's it from me ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here you are my lifeblood dark horizon out